Nearly five months after the deadly Capitol riot and insurrection led by a pro-Trump mob, Republican House leaders are now openly opposing a bipartisan commission to investigate the riot. Tonight, on the eve of the House vote to create the 9-11-style commission, the leadership sent members of their party a letter telling them to vote no. The main objection cited was, quote, the legislation establishes a commission to only investigate the attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. An easy answer here would seem to be, well, yes, it was the only violent insurrection at the Capitol that we know of in the modern era. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy set the stage for this earlier today when he came out with his own statement against the commission, noting its scope was too narrow and should include other acts of political violence. Earlier tonight, he defended his position during an appearance on Fox News. Remember on Good Friday, an officer was killed out at the Capitol. We don't need to investigate that. What about all the riots that have led up throughout the summer, the, the unrest from BLM, Antifa and others? No, you can't investigate that. This is driven solely by politics and Nancy Pelosi, but we should not be a part of that. McCarthy's whataboutism and his objections come after several Republicans, including their top member on the House Homeland Security Committee, indeed endorsed the formation of the commission. This morning, Speaker Pelosi was blunt in her reaction. Disappointing, but not surprising, that the uh, cowardice on the part of some on the Republican side not to want to find the truth. Even if this bill passes along party lines in the House, it will need 60 votes, meaning 10 Republicans would have to cross the aisle in order for it to clear the Senate. It's far from certain that those votes are there, even though the Senate Majority Leader is determined to bring the bill to the floor. I will put the January 6th commission legislation on the floor of the Senate for a vote, period. Republicans can let their constituents know are they on the side of truth, or do they want to cover up for the insurrectionists and for Donald Trump? I'm safe in characterizing uh, our conference as willing to listen to the arguments about whether such a commission is needed. We are undecided about the way forward at this point. We want to read the fine print. Meanwhile, Axios reporting tonight that McConnell told his fellow Republicans during a closed-door caucus lunch today that he can't support the 1-6 commission in its current form. I'm very puzzled by Leader McCarthy's now reversal uh, and opposition to the commission. I wonder what Mr. McCarthy is afraid of. Is he afraid of subpoenas? Is he afraid of the truth? His opposition is troubling evidence uh, that he's putting his self-interest, which is strangely tethered to Trump interest above country, above duty, above, above the truth, above his own oath. Let's talk uh, about a simpler time. Earlier today, before we understood the Trump organization was under a uh, criminal investigation, when it looked like the biggest worry the former president had was this 1-6 commission. I'm tempted to say he tweeted a statement, but he can't do that. I guess he's faxing these, but he, here it is anyway. Republicans in the House and Senate should not approve the Democrat trap of the January 6th commission. It's just more partisan unfairness. And unless the here's the what about ism murders, riots and fire bombings in Portland, Minneapolis, Seattle, Chicago and New York are also going to be studied. This discussion should be ended immediately. Republicans must get much tougher and much smarter and stop being used by the radical left. Hopefully Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy are listening. Uh, A.B. McConnell at least must get tired of being told to genuflect. What's Trump's worry on this matter? Oh, well, uh, President Trump, uh, former President Trump on January 6th, at the end of that day, remember, he said, we will remember this day forever. Um, since then, he has learned that um, this would be a very uncomfortable thing to go through if he is called to testify, and that Kevin McCarthy is a fact witness. He had this very dramatic phone call with the president that day, begging him. To, to step in, uh, quell the violence, stop the siege, send reinforcements, 
And then because it was such a negative conversation with Kevin McCarthy literally shouting, he relayed this to other members, many of them. Uh, and they are the ones who spoke about it um, in the subsequent days. He is um, not a very shrewd leader. He throws his rank and file under the bus. He did that on the Marjorie Taylor Greene committee vote when he first backed uh, Liz Cheney on February 1. And he thought that dispatching Liz Cheney last week would take care of this. Now he has thrown John Katko under the bus, someone who negotiated this 1-6 commission with his permission and with his demands. And once they were met by the Democrats, he panicked. So now a vote of conscience has turned into, um, you know, we're, we're recommending, we're not whipping, but we're recommending and we're watching you that you vote against this. A bunch of Republicans in the House are gonna vote for it because he doesn't lead and they're not following. The problem for McCarthy tonight is once again, when he throws his own members on the bus, under the bus, he still gets thrown under the bus by President Trump. Someone he hoped, if he hung with, um, would help him become speaker next year. And we all know how loyal uh, Donald Trump is. So it's gonna be a very interesting day tomorrow. Um, but this is a, a mess, uh, it, and largely of Kevin McCarthy's making. He doesn't want to testify about that phone call, even though he's told many people about it, and it's now uh, part of the history. And obviously, um, he's doing his best to pr protect Trump from the commission as well. Phil, A.B. raises such a good point. It is possible to want something so badly that you prevent yourself from getting it. Uh, we're not stupid. We heard McCarthy at one point say that Donald Trump bears responsibility for what happened on 1-6. We've seen the trip to Mar-a-Lago. We can imagine the communications between the two. We see how beholden the Republican leader is to the thrall of Donald Trump. And now the problem for McCarthy is he's going to lose members of his own caucus, correct? Yes. It, it certainly appears that way, Brian. Uh, you know, a number of House Republicans are likely to support uh, support this January 6th commission, including the House Republican, as, as A.B. was just mentioning, who was tapped by McCarthy to negotiate on behalf of the Republicans and setting up the compromise language for how that commission would be governed and how it would take shape. Let's keep in mind that this is only June, uh, not June, it's actually May <laughs> of, of 2021. There are now 18 months before uh, the midterm elections. That is a long time for Kevin McCarthy to play this dance with Donald Trump uh, before he'll find out if he becomes the House Speaker. And, you know, it's a very treacherous thing that the House Republican leadership is doing here in, in trying to please former President Trump and trying to not get crosswise with him and discovering through these statements that the former president is putting out uh, that the loyalty doesn't always go both ways. And so it, it, it's tricky here, but I would expect a number of House Republicans will vote for this commission. And we're also hearing, by the way, that a number of Republican senators are likely to vote for it, uh, first and foremost being Mitt Romney.